After the advent of Service Pack 1, this is a lot simpler than it used to be. Before you visit site, make sure you download the media because, as you can see, it's quite hefty in size. You really don't want to be downloading that through a slow internet connection. Also, make sure you've got your unlock keys and licenses. Now, before you even think about installing, make sure both on the server you're installing on and your other boxes everything is running nice and smooth. Have a look in your event viewers make sure all your domain replication and everything's running fine there's no glaring errors in your app logs have a good dig through your system logs just make sure that you give everything a good health check before you think about introducing Exchange. Remember Exchange now uses your domain infrastructure for its replication so make sure all that's working fine Make sure you've got all the updates on. As you can see, this is a 2008 R2 server. It doesn't have Service Pack 1 on, so let's bang Service Pack 1 on. This isn't a prerequisite, but it's always good practice to make sure you've got all the updates and Service Packs on before you start. This is the machine that's going to host Exchange. Obviously, I've speeded that up dramatically. Service Pack 1 is now on. That. Run a Windows update as well, make sure everything's all tickety boo. Now, depending on what um, you read, some information says your global catalogue server, the local one, has to be at least 2003 Service Pack 2. Some say the Schema Master, so let's hedge our bets and just make sure that here's how to locate your global catalogue server. Obviously, you will have a lot more servers in your live environment than I do in the test environment. But as a rule of thumb you will not go wrong if you make sure all your domain controllers are at least 2003 Service Pack 2. Another prerequisite for Exchange 2010 is that your domain and forest functional levels be at Windows Server 2003. You can find your domain functional level by opening Active Directory Users and Computers. Right click the domain and select Raise Domain Functional Level. And there it is there. Mine's already at Windows Server 2003. This is the minimum that you need to be at to put Exchange 2010 in. If yours says um, Server 2000 Mixed or Native, you'll need to raise. Now you can also check your domain function level in domains and trusts. In there, all right, we've already checked this, so we know it's server 2003 at the domain level. But the reason I've come back in here is to check the forest function level. which should also be at Windows Server 2003. OK. Because we're installing Exchange with Service Pack 1 already slipped into it, there are a hundred hoops to jump through before we start. So, let's kick off straight away and run Setup XE. Run as administrator. Uh, the first thing to do is select the uh, language option. I'm just going to select it only from the DVD and then install Microsoft Exchange. Click next at the intro page. Accept the license agreement. No, I don't want to participate in error reporting. Right, by default it will have typical selected the big change is automatically install Windows Server rules and features required for Exchange Server. This wasn't here previously before Service Pack 1 was slipped in. Now I'm going to choose custom even though I'm only going to install the rules that I would have got with normal. That's mailbox, client access and hub transport and the management tools. I'm not installing Unified Messaging or Edge. And there we go, that's the, the new bit with Service Pack 1. 
Next, don't I don't want split permissions. Uh, I've got one group of admins, and they're going to do my domain and mixed change stuff. I, right, this is warning you: if you have Outlook 2003, your calendar scheduling is slightly different. Uh, I don't have any 2003, so I don't have to worry about a schedule plus free busy public folder. Uh, yes, we are going to be internet facing, so type in here the FQDN or the public resolvable DNS name of the server. Next. No, I don't want to participate in the experience improvement program. Next. Okay, now it's going to run through and do some readiness checks. I speeded this up a little. Okay, we've got a few warnings, but that's okay. The top one is telling us that the uh, AD is going to get be prepared. The next one down is telling us that we need to install Office 2010 filter packs. We will do that in a moment. Uh, there's also a warning on there because in the test environment here my um, exchange box is a domain controller it's just letting me know that um, exchange admins will have some elevated privileges that's what all that's about and that's warning me once again that the filter packs need to be installed it's ok we'll do that one with finished And install. Again, I've speeded this up. Uh, take quite some time. It'll go through, put all its bits and bobs in, and install each one of the rules required. Speed it up, this takes a while. <laughs> Normally, at this time, you could pause the video and go and have a cup of coffee. There you go, that's everything in, completed, and tick green. It's going to finish off in the management console, click finish. And because obviously we've made some drastic changes, it's asking us for a reboot. Let's do that and restart the server. Okay, now it's back up again. Uh, remember, it asked us we had to install the filter packs for Office 2010. So let's go and download them. Obviously we're going to need the 64-bit ones. Yep. You talk them on the desktop. Let's install them. Yeah, I accept. Next. Smashing. That's that done. Don't need that anymore. Now I'm going to launch the Exchange Management Console. I can launch it straight from there, but I'm going to drop a shortcut on my desktop. So just right click, send to desktop, create shortcut. Fire up the Exchange Management Console. After a couple of seconds, just click the Exchange on Premises. And because it's new, it'll complain that it hasn't been licensed and it will only run for 119 days without a license. Well, that's not a problem. 
let's install the license. Go across to the left hand side and expand server configuration. Select our server in the middle. Go right over the right hand side. Enter product key. This one I prepared earlier. There you go. Enter the key. Okay, that's telling us that the license has been validated, but that it will not take effect until the information store has been restarted. The simplest way to do that is to go to the services console or run services.msc and locate Microsoft Exchange Information Store. Here it is there. Right click and restart. So that's it back up with our license applied. Now you'll notice uh, that uh, I installed as administrator and administrator is the only mailbox on at this time. So to do a little bit of testing just to make sure everything's working internally let's open Outlook Web Access or Outlook Web App. It's on HTTPS localhost slash OWA. It's a self-signed cert so it will error. Continue to this website and log in using our domain administrator's credentials. That's okay. There we go. Now let's test mail internally. Remember there's only one mailbox and we're logged into it, so I'm only going to be able to send myself an email. But at least that will prove that the store is up and everything's fine. So send one to administrator. Test. Internal mail test. Send and hopefully after a couple of seconds there we go. There's me mail come back to me. So I know mail is working internally. To send mail in from the outside I'm gonna have to make a change on the receive connector. Remember this is the only one that I've got so it it's going to be internet facing on your internet facing exchange box on the receive connector on its properties we're going to need to enable anonymous users otherwise nobody's going to be able to send you email from outside your organization assuming of course that you've got port 25 open and an MX record that's pointing to you publicly I'm going to test mail in from my personal email account to administrator domainair.com so this is from outside the exchange 2010 infrastructure that I've built this is on my email and hopefully all being well there we go that's me receive the email that I've sent in from outside Now to be able to sell, send mail out, assuming of course we have port 25 SMTP open outbound on our firewall, we need a send connector, which is an organization configuration hub transport send connectors. See there isn't one in at the minute, so if I right click new send connector, let's give it a sensible name, like send connector. Intended use is internet because it's public facing. Next, now I need to add in the address space. So select add, and under address space, I'm going to type asterisk because it's for sending to everybody. Tick the box that says include all subdomains. Okay. 
Next. Now if you were using a smart host, you could select that and add that in, edit that in there, but I'm just going to use DNS to route my mail. Yep, we've only got one. Click new. There we go. Click finish, and there's our send connector. We should now be able to send mail out. So if I select the mail that I received from my external account and reply to it, all being well. There's my mail received externally and everything's up and working. Listening, don't forget to come visit us at www.petnetlive.com. Thank you very much.